Okay, so today we're going to look at Kant's criticisms of the ontological argument. Remember, the ontological argument being that because God is defined as perfect and one perfection is existence, God must exist. Now, Kant was a Prussian philosopher um, who lived in the middle of the Enlightenment period. His book, The Critique of Pure Reason, deals with a great many things, but near the end he also gives us two criticisms of the ontological argument. I've got this section up here just so we can look at kind of which bits of the ontological argument he's attacking. So one of the bits he's attacking is Anselm's um, argument that to deny God is contradictory. So denying God, so being an atheist, so denying God's existence is contradictory. It's contradictory... Because, remember Anselm says, to have God in your mind uh, would necessitate you believing that he exists. Because God's, God by definition exists. So this part, saying that God doesn't exist, also requires you to have God in your mind, which means that God, you should know that God does exist. They are contradictory. They can't both be true. Now, Kant says to that that rejecting God isn't actually contradictory. He says, look, if we have, say, a triangle, you can reject, say, the three-sidedness of the triangle and have a concept of the triangle. That is contradictory. But rejecting the whole triangle isn't contradictory. Basically, what what Kant is saying is that if you reject the predicates, don't worry, we will cover that in just a second, if you reject the predicate, uh, but not the subject, so the thing that the uh, sentence is about, then it is contradictory. It is contradictory. But we're going to see why he thinks certain things aren't contradictory in a minute. Um, so let's just talk about what predicate and subject are. I think it's really important for us to understand Kant properly because both of his objections involve this distinction between a predicate and a subject. Uh, so we're just going to define them and then we're going to come back to the triangle. So a subject is the thing the sentence is about. Okay, so if we say, you know, a sentence like a triangle has three sides, the subject would be the bit that goes a triangle. So, so the subject is the thing the sentence is actually about, whereas the predicate, again, these look like scary words, they're really not. The predicate is, uh, is about the subject. So it's something that adds to our kind of understanding of the the subject. So in the example, a triangle has three sides. The, the subject is triangle and the predicate is three sides. Let me just give you another example so we're, we, we've got a really clear idea of what's going on. Um, I might give you an example like this. Uh, the sun... is hot. Okay, so in this example, uh, this part here is the subject, because that's the thing the uh, some sentence is about, and then the hot, that is the predicate, because it is about the subject. Okay, and that's it. So when Kant's saying that you can, if you reject the predicate but not the subject, then it is contradictory. What Kant means is that you could have something like, you know, triangle. This is a triangle. Um, obviously, you're not in primary school. 
which of course is is the is the subject and then of course linked to the triangle you have you know it has three sides and that of course is the predicate because it is the thing the sentence it is about uh, the subject now if I were to say ah but a triangle doesn't have three sides so it doesn't have three sides that would be contradictory because the the subject triangle necessitates the three sides it is part of the definition so it would be contradictory to say that the the a triangle with three sides doesn't have three sides that says can that makes perfect sense but that's not and this is where we come back to the ontological argument that is not what you're doing when you reject the existence of a thing so if you reject the whole thing and this is important but if you reject the whole thing, which is not just the predicates, right? That is subject and predicate. Then there's nothing left to contradict. There's nothing there to be contradictory. So, yes, it's right if you reject the predicate but not the subject and say a triangle doesn't have three sides, that's obviously contradictory. But if you say, I don't believe in, in triangles, you might be factually wrong, but you're not contradicting anything because of course there would be nothing there to contradict it just disappears entirely and now we turn to the nature of god remember that anselm is saying that denying god is contradictory well kant says in reply no by rejecting god you're rejecting both the subject and the predi predicate so there's nothing to contradict. As he writes, the same applies to the concept of an absolutely necessary being. So the same applies to God. Okay? Remove its existence and you remove the thing itself with all its predicates so that a contradiction is, becomes impossible. Okay? So rejecting God... Oh, sorry, wrong, wrong pen there. Interesting little kind of shadow for that arrow. Uh, rejecting God, not contradictory. Because you are rejecting both the predicate, or predicates really, and the subject itself, the idea itself. So that's... That's, um, that's his first criticism, that if you reject entirely the thing, then there's nothing left to contradict. The idea doesn't necessitate its existence. The second argument, which is definitely the most famous one, is uh, related to another part of Anselm's argument. Now, Anselm says, if you remember, that existence is greater the non-existence. Now, why does he say that? He says that existence is greater than non-existence. And he uses an example to show us why, if you remember, the example of the painter. Like, the painter has it in his mind, but having it in the canvas is greater because this is now in his mind and in reality it's doubled its amount of realness so that's 
That's Anselm's central claim. He has to use that to prove that God exists, that God has all great making qualities and existence is greater than non-existence, so God must have existence. Now, Kant takes objection to that. He says, mm, hold on a second. I don't think that existence is like any other characteristic, because existence isn't a predicate. A predicate is something that's about the subject, right? But existence isn't really about the subject. It's just claiming the subject exists. It doesn't add to our concept of the thing. Look just quickly at, at the example that we used. The sun is hot. Now, I highlighted the subject, the sun, and hot, the predicate, the is there, the sun is. That's not a predicate. That doesn't add to our idea. He, Kant gives this example. He says, look, I could say something like, God is omnipotent, and here the kind of the subject and predicate are pretty clear. This is the subject, God, and the omnipotent, well, that's the predicate. But saying just God is, well, that's just got the subject with all of his predicates included. You know, it's, it's got all of the, the characteristics of God, but the is isn't a predicate. The is doesn't change our concept of the subject at all. Hmm. As Kant writes... He says, if then I take the subject, God, so God's the subject, with all its predicates, so omnipotence, omniscience, and so on, and say God is, or there is a God, which is the same thing, I don't add a new predicate. I do not add a new predicate to the concept of God, but only posit the subject in itself with all its predicates. In other words, but only think that the subject with all its predicates, exists. Okay, So claiming God is doesn't change God at all. But of course, to claim that existence is greater would mean that it would change God. So Anselm can't claim that existence is greater because it doesn't change the, the nature or concept of God. Let's put it like this. To be a perfection... A thing has to be a predicate. Okay? But existence isn't a predicate, and that's really important. He's demonstrated that here. It doesn't change our concept of the thing. So, if in order to be a perfection you have to be a predicate and existence isn't a predicate, well then, existence isn't a perfection. And that means, of course, that God can be perfect and not exist. In other words, it's not contradictory to claim that God doesn't exist and God can be perfect without existing because existence doesn't add to God's perfection. And that is Kant's two criticisms of the ontological argument.